So with all the posting I've done on social media and YouTube, things like our Norco cabinet here and our surveillance server and our other servers and all that stuff, people have been hounding me. When are you actually going to do a tour of the server room? And it's finally here. I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off because I keep making little changes and upgrades and tweaks, but it's at the point now where everything is pretty much up and running. So today I'm going to be putting some finishing touches on it in terms of cable management and well, actually closing up the side of the cabinet here and uh, giving you guys a tour of all the equipment that we've got in the Linus Media Group server closet. The Logitech G303 features a lightweight design, an advanced optical sensor with Delta Zero technology, and RGB lighting to match your setup. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. So I want to start by responding to one of the criticisms people had of our server room when I first started posting pictures on social media, and that was that we didn't have any backup power. As the savvy among you will know, it's extraordinarily important, really for any machine, but especially for a server, to not lose power unexpectedly. So a UPS, and in fact we actually do have a number of them, four total in the cabinet here, a UPS not only acts as a battery backup in the event that there's a sudden power loss to the building, it also acts to smooth out the incoming power, which is good for the, well, the life expectancy of any of the hardware that is hooked up to it. So there is one issue though, the ones we've got here uh, were refurb units that were sponsored by General Electric and it turned out that we had some issues with the batteries in some of them. The good news though, I've got my three replacements right here ready to install. Ugh. Ugh. So while I'm pulling these out, I guess I'll give a bit of an explanation for how the, the room came to be. Number one, originally there were actually supposed to be uh, two cabinets in here. One full height and one half height right next to it. So I thought I could just kind of set and forget the back of it and then not worry too much. Well, I have needed access to the back of this server cabinet pretty much every other day. This is my brilliant system right now for uh, controlling any of these computers. I got my monitor down there, I got my keyboard mouse here. So, so this is ridiculous. So I learned a couple of things. Number one is that the 24U cabinet that I have out there is never coming in here. And number two, I need a better system for using a monitor, keyboard and mouse on these servers. So this is a TrendNet something or other KVM. And this was sent to us by RackSolutions.com to hold a keyboard and mouse and wall mount them and tuck them away. So I'll show you guys that in a minute. The one thing that did thankfully work out was the cooling solution for the room. I had originally planned to not hook it up to the air conditioning. This passive air intake and that ducted fan up there actually replaces the air in this room about once per minute. And it has turned out to be just fine, thankfully. So with the construction going on while we were moving in, as you can imagine, dust in this room has been a freaking nightmare. I have taken every single one of these servers out three times since first installing them and dusted them and I'm probably gonna have to do it once more. In the future, I'm gonna put some kind of a, of a filter on this and along the bottom of the door, but in the meantime now, it's not nearly as bad now that the uh, construction is no longer going on in the warehouse outside and now that we've sealed the concrete floor. So with the new UPSs installed, in order to minimize downtime for those guys in there while I switch all the systems over to it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my KVM set up first. Before I mount this to the wall, this is really cool. It's got a little magnetic closing thing on the top. It goes onto the wall, a little something like that. It comes with some mounting hardware, keyboard mouse, and uh, yeah, all that's left is to make sure it fits. Yes, we're good. Maybe I have to use deep scan mode. There should be a stud next to this. 
I need to know where it is. Okay, well, fine. I'm just gonna go with drywall screws because this is already too much work. So that is gonna be pretty tight, my friends. Pretty tight indeed. All right. Don't tell me I hit a stud. Awesome. What the hell? Really? What are the odds? I went to mount the, this thing with all drywall screws and I hit wood all four times. So I don't need them at all. So I'm just putting the wood screws right in. All right. Now let's double check the door. Oh, so tight. Awesome. My good buddy Taryn here asked me, however shall you keep the keyboard in place when you close the door? Surely that will happen. To which I replied, they thought of that. This, my friends, is a strip of industrial strength Velcro. You're not gonna Velcro the mouse down, are you? No, I'm not going to Velcro the mouse down. So cool. All right, so now. Oh, oh crap. Let's try that again. Ah, there we go. Look at that. There's little cable management holes. I can take my mouse wire and keep it in place with this. Not too shabby. Okay, so next step then monitor mount. Okay, well this old Samsung seems to work, so I guess we'll uh, we'll go with this puppy. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is take it oop, off the uh, included stand. We could also look at the instructions. Put the thing on the thing. Four, like this. All right, now we gotta wall mount this puppy. Okay, I guess right about there. Linus Media Group, we put the ball in and eyeball in. All right, let's see if we manage to stay in the drywall this time. What the heck? Uh, you tripped the breaker. Oh. Yeah. Lol. Maybe this is like standard practice. Maybe it's plywood behind this whole thing. I'm just not aware of that. Okay. I think it's just plywood back there. That's cool. So now this baby goes on there. For the final step, you put the monitor on. Just kidding, guys. Oh, wait. Oh, I, I did do it upside down. Wait, what? Damn it. Did you? <laughs> yes. It's amazing they even let me have power tools. I even thought to myself when I was test fitting it, wow, it's really weird that they have you put the hooks on the bottom and then put the thumb screw in on the top. It seems like it'd be a lot easier if you went the other way around. All right, so the next step is to figure out how and where to mount our KVM. Okay, so that's interesting. The issue is that these are not gonna make it around to the backs of these computers unless I take this side cover off on the other side, which, which is an option. I think, I think I'm gonna do that. Um, okay, hold on. There's a zip tie on there. Oh, okay, there we go. we're good. So this is just gonna come off and go with the other one that I also have not ever put on yet. Oh yeah, just hold yeah. this here. Okay. You know what? Let's plug into the main storage server. Haha, -ha, it works. So now all that's left is to finalize the position for this puppy. These, this is supposed to go in the rack, but I didn't want to take up any rack space with it because as you can see, it's fairly limited at this point. So I was thinking, oh, I'll just put them on this way. But the holes pretty much don't line up at all. I can only do one at a time. So we're gonna try that. We're gonna hope for the best. This thing isn't too heavy. And we'll see how it goes. Is your KVM earthquake safe? Mine's not. Ugh. Wish I'd gotten a drill. 
Get on my level. That looks uncomfortable, doesn't it? What does? Getting on my level. Just, just, just. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, realistically, that's not going anywhere. So now, I'm gonna run around and plug all this stuff in, and then I'm gonna let everyone know that the uh, servers are gonna be down for a little bit. So, uh, hang tight. Right about, yeah. Yeah, okay, so we can actually check all of them. Okay. Cool. All right, so the KVM solution totally works. All that's left now is to shut everything down, do some cable management, and then I'll give you guys a tour of exactly what everything in the rack is. Uh, hey, can you guys save your work? We're gonna have a network outage for about 20 minutes. Everyone likes it when I work on the server room. All right, let's go. Shut down. So I'm gonna get a call from the security company telling us that our uh, security system is shut down. Wow, it is astonishing how much quieter it is in here with uh, none of these systems running. So, let's get the setup of Doom the crap out of here. Oh, so frustrating. So I moved a bunch of uh, these power squids in here and now I need them out. And we just gotta do a little bit of cable management back here and then we're actually in uh, pretty good shape. What is this? Perhaps it is important. Well, can you unplug it? Well, are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So that goes there. This goes here. We, oh, oh, son of a, cable management. Do you want it done nicely or do you want it done fast? Oh shoot, no, don't turn on. Not now. Okay. Um, oh, balls. Okay, things are turning on randomly now. So that is gonna go right there. Uh, yes, it's okay. I am just, uh, I'm just plugging it back in now. Oh, shut up. I need a longer cord. All right, let's power on all the UPSs. One, two. Okay. Okay, that is too long for where it's running to. What the crap is this? There we go. Okay, so I think we're gonna call the front good enough. She does close, except for this cable that I have running out of the room to uh, the Wancho. Whoa, what are you? Oh yeah, that's another, that's another one that runs out of the room. <laughs> ah, yeah. So we'll fire Fraser back up next, I guess. The vault is ready to come back up. The surveillance system is back up. So now that we've got everything pretty much good to go, I do need a better solution for some of these ethernet cables running out the front door, but we're calling it good enough for now. I'll walk you guys through everything that's in here. So this is our MRV. This is provided by our internet service provider. They figured it costs somewhere in the neighborhood of $40,000. Fortunately, we don't have to buy that. We just lease it. These are the terminations for all of our CAT 6A wiring throughout the entire building. Yes, we are full CAT 6A, even where it doesn't make any sense thanks to a small miscommunication between my wife and the builders. This is our Cisco router, which we will actually be replacing because this puppy is a little bit difficult for us to configure since none of us are Cisco certified and you gotta do it all via command line and because it's a little bit older and underpowered for the gigabit, that's 1,000 up, 1,000 down connection that we have in here. So we'll be replacing this with a PFSense box fairly shortly. This is our 48 port gigabit switch with a couple of 10 gigabit SFP plus ports over here. This is our 10 gigabit switch. This is the, the heart of most of the servers and the editing den where everyone has a 10 gig ethernet connection. Mm. This right here is the surveillance server, which you've seen before. It's chock full of WD purple drives, ASUS WS board, all that kind of reliable, awesome stuff. This is our first UPS. So this handles most of the networking gear. And then this is our 24 SSD server. It has 24 960 gig Kingston SSDs in here in RAID 50. So this is a RAID 5. 
this is a RAID 5, this is a RAID 5, and they are all striped together from within Windows. This does most of our file server duties for any of the projects that we're working on. It is equipped with an ASRock motherboard, it's an X99 board, but we threw a Xeon and ECC memory in there anyway because it's a workstation board that does support those particular parts. Um, it's got a redundant power supply in it now, that was something that I didn't get around to till quite a bit later, and it's got dual 10 gigabit ethernet on board. So this is one that actually has a trunked connection, so it's capable of 20 gigabit per second with multiple people hitting it at the same time. This right here is a Newton server. This is our approx, I think it's about 118 terabytes or something like that. This is the vault, the archival server. Whenever we're done working on something, it goes off of Wannick and onto the vault. This one only has a single 10 gigabit connection because frankly, we don't need to access it that often. And this, this is the really fun machine. I'm gonna have a full video on the way that this server has completely changed our video editing workflow in the near future here, but this is Fraser server. It has dual 18 core Xeons, 128 gigs of RAM, two Titan Blacks, and uh, oh yeah, it's actually, I threw a RAID card and about a 20 terabyte RAID array in there now as well. So what happens here is whenever we ingest footage, it crunches it and makes it easier to work on. Then when we're done our videos, this crunches them to the finished formats that we upload to the various video sites that we upload to. And uh, this is a very cool little piece of machinery. And it's the only one that actually extends outside the room. So this is the workstation that's actually hooked up through uh, Thunderbolt and USB 3 to that server in the room. And what we do here is we take all of our media. So you can see we've got this fancy pants Thunderbolt card reader. We've got an active StarTech USB 3 cable leading to this Thermaltake dual drive dock. And I'm actually gonna pick up another one of those so that we can have quite a few SSD docks. Um, our FS700 and our Blackmagic cinema cameras all shoot onto SSD. And then we've got this CalDigit, um, Thunderbolt breakout box here that we use to run our peripherals and then we're using a pass-through to a display port monitor So this is where we actually interface directly with that machine and that video will be coming Hopefully sometime pretty soon because we made some pretty amazing discoveries with respect to video editing workflows and how they can be improved so simply put, BattleNation.com is a place to go and vote on your favorite enthusiast grade PC components and determine with your fellow enthusiasts which ones are the best. So the contest is running for a total of six weeks with weekly battles between different product categories. So be it headsets, which is this week with the G633 from Logitech as the current front runner, or be it completely other categories like keyboards, which are coming up next week, uh, video cards, displays, all that kinds of cool stuff. So you might be asking yourself, well, what is the benefit of voting? Well, there's uh, no benefit other than, oh, at the end of each week, the top 10 participants on the leaderboard are entered to win the item that won that week's battle. And at the very end of the competition, the top 50 are entered in a draw to win the ultimate gaming PC. So you can check out full details at battlenation.com, which is linked in the video description. So I think that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't though, you know where that button is, but if you did like it, hit that like button, get subscribed, and maybe even consider supporting us by buying a cool t-shirt like this one, giving us a contribution through our community forum, which you should definitely join, by the way, or even just changing your Amazon bookmarked one with our affiliate code. The instructions are up there. Uh, so I think that pretty much wraps it up then. If you're looking for something else to watch, uh, I did a build log with my son that in my, you know, unbiased opinion is pretty darn cute. So you can check that out. In the meantime, peace and I'll see you later.